The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. Yeah, this is the Thursday edition, Monday, uh, Thursday, the 27th of April. Got two days to go before we wrap up the month of April. Look at this monthly chart. This is the Dow. Look at the weekly chart bumping into the Chapman Wave Inside Track repellent zone, got pulled back. This is now the monthly chart, which goes back to the high of January uh, uh, 2020. Did I say 21? That was 2022. Let me just change that. Did I redo that and forget to? Okay, 2022. And look, we're using that high and then the, the other highs of, uh, say, uh, November, December, and then earlier this year. Um, and it hasn't broken out yet. And it's sitting there. And, and the technicals actually start to improve enough to say it could do it and it failed to do it. Look at the monthly chart. The histogram has improved quite a bit in the MACD. The on-balance volume is good. The stochastic's flat at 58%, but it is flat. And the nine-period moving average has been above the 14 for about four months now. And yet there isn't enough power to the upside. And that just says to me that there's... A bifurcation going on. There is a split market that is telling us a great deal about the internals of the market. You've got the XLF. I'm just going to jump around. Today's jump around day because I will not be here tomorrow. I'm out all day. Be back Monday. And for subscribers to my opening call, my, uh, uh, my video that I usually do on the weekend, I'll do it sometime Sunday. And I won't be all that long because well, I, shouldn't, I don't know how long it'll be. It depends on what's needed. But we usually go through everything that's important. Um, and in this particular instance, what I'm looking at is, look, the XLF, that's the financials. Without the financials really holding well, moving, uh, moving in sync with the rising market, I think that that just says this is such an individualized moment that certain stocks are doing fantastically and other stocks, I mean, first certain stocks like, a, look at this, uh, Meta. Meta screams to the upside, breaks out. 384.33 was the high in September 21. It's, it drops a little bit. It drops to $88.09 in October of this past year. And now, what are we looking at? We're looking at a spike today up 14% to 236, uh, up $30. Leg D, this is a beautiful pattern. I, I thought I did it yesterday, but maybe I didn't. I love this pattern where you've got, but with earnings coming out, I, I wasn't prepared to do anything because you just never know. But the chart said that in this little mini channel coming down, see these little Chamboy falling axe formations where you've got lower highs and much lower lows, even though it's two or three bars, and then it breaks to the upside. Look at that beautiful move there. Well, we got almost the same thing right here. It took a little longer. Earnings come out, whoops. And now what it says at 239, uh, yesterday's trading in the 210 area is extremely important support if there is a really big sell-off at any point in May, right? Uh, you know, selling may go away, whatever the expression is. But at this particular point, the nine period over the uh, week, over the 14 period moving average in the weekly chart, the MACD so strong, the stochastic flat at 97, on balance volume rising, and the MACD in the monthly chart with April just about to conclude is crossing positive. And that should stay that way no matter what happens. You'd have to drop to about 170 to see that deflect lower. So I think that that's, um, this is showing you what, what a, a diverse market we've got. Caterpillar, on the other hand, this is the deep cyclicals, crumbles. It drops 4% down $9 to 207.20. And look at the weekly chart, made this arch formation, and now it's just it's turning around and it's making lower lows and lower highs. So that's what I wanted to say. And then together with this, you've got the SMHs uh, down three at 237.57. With the financials and the semiconductors weak, you have to be very specific about what you like, why you like it, and how you want to hold on to it, uh, whatever the position is that you have. For instance, we have um, 
a dividend stock. We haven't had a dividend stock in a long time. We've got a dividend stock. It's coming off lows in its own pattern sequence, but it's in an area that says, is this really going to work? But so far, it's held okay. Not great, but it's held okay. And I would love for it to to find support, continued support for about another week or two, because if it can do that, I think it has the potential to give capital gain plus really good dividends. That's what you really want to be finding in this kind of market. So I'm being very selective. So when I do my webinar on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, I'll be discussing certain stocks, certain sectors, certain stocks within certain sectors, even if the sector is weak, these might be the strongest stocks. So for instance, I'm not doing anything with us right now, but yes, P-A-N-W. This is Palo Alto Network. For a long time, considered one of the very best, together with maybe Crowd, uh, the very best in a sector. And yet, look at the difference. Crowd was at 298 back in November of 2021, slumps under 100, then comes back to what? 125 right now, made a peak D, big arch formation in the daily. And yet, Pan Palo Alto, all, one of the very best, makes uh, almost, it's within 10%, maybe even less, of its all time high. The all time high was, why not type that in? That was at 213.63. Let me just type that in right now. Two, maybe uh, 213.16, I think I said. Um, back in, I think that was July, let me just, August, let me just check that out. April. That was April of 2022. Makes a cup for drops sharply, makes the dreaded H pattern, then holds very nicely, then rallies sharply, and then goes to 203. I mean, 10 points, 5% away. Is that? It's even less and then the um, all-time high, and now it's starting to drop sharply. So within that context, I'm saying, is it better to buy Hack, which is the prime cybersecurity ETF? Where you've got a basket of stops. At times, I've gone for subscribers. We've gone to ETFs because I found that it's the best way to do it because the individual stocks were too difficult. Now I'm saying I think it's time, maybe in this particular sector, to be looking at the best of the best and go for the stock itself. Doesn't matter what the price is, go for the stock because that might be better than being dragged down. That's number one. Number two is. Um, Within the context, just going back to the SMHs, look, in the SMHs, you've got, whoops, I typed it into the den by mistake. There we go. Um, look, here's the SMHs. Uh, we've got an arch formation, the left side low at that trough D before it went all the way to that alternate account peak F, went to um, 232. Spirals up to 263, I think it was, yeah, 263.57. And now it's trading almost at the low of the day of 237.98. Um, in a leg D to the downside with the 234 level of the 200 period moving average. So that's what I'm saying. You've got to be, yeah, and plus, yeah, and that's a good point. It has the volume. There is another one, bug. And bug has exactly the same chart formation. I don't, let me see what the volume's like there. Uh, that's 238, and heck yes. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, it has more bug. It's probably uh, it has a more volume. But either way, if you get the right trend, you got it right. So I'm saying this is very, this is a very specific. There should be a bounce. I said to subscribers today. I'll be back in a moment. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open. 
to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, Basil Chapman, Tiger Traditions Hour. And I had a couple of questions I want to get to now because we're going to be talking about the chart formations that form over and over. That's the, uh, this is, let me just pull this in here. First of all, we like to always pick the lowest low to start the wave count. The idea is to get from a buy signal to a buy mode, which says that you can get to the fourth highest peak. Peak A is the first, B is the second, C is the third. D, you can go alphabetically, sequentially, all the way to E, F, and G, but G, there's never an H. So a G, you have to decide, does it, does, is there an instant restart? Is there another way of counting it? Do you have an alternative count? Very often you get to a G. I usually put G slash C because it sometimes turns around. What's the stock that did it today? Oh, oh, this is it. Uh, right, I believe that this is it. Now, let me just see. Meta. Yeah, Meta. Let me just get this going here. There it is. Come on. Yeah, it went to a G slash C. I think I'm almost sure I mentioned it yesterday in one of the shows, either the 10, 10 a.m. or the one o'clock show, uh, that this was uh, um, at a GSAC. Usually, GSAC, if the technicals are still strong and the nine was still over the 14, it should go to a D. Would you expect that the high of uh, the 14th, which was 222.11, would see today's high of 241.44? Well, that's what it's done. And that's really important because it's giving some, as long as the market feels that there are certain areas that are working, that's always a very good sign because it gives you a kind of a balance between the weak and the strong. So I want you to go back to uh, ARKK. This is uh, Kathy Wood. It's her um, ETF. I, I'm not even sure. Does she own the company? I'm not sure why she should still be there because, I, as I recall, I mean, I remember with Fidelity, I remember the different, uh, I used to work with different uh, fund managers there on, on the technical analysis. I remember that when they started to fail, um, they, they, would, they didn't last long or they were transferred from the from a big like a growth a growth an income fund or something to one of the very smaller ones the the ones that were maybe fixed income or something, and yet yeah, here she is from 125 uh, down to the 34 area oh absolutely even low what am I saying 34 33 was the low back in 2020 screams up to 125 and then it comes back down and the low of December of 2022 is 29. 29.43. So I'm not sure. I'm not. I mean, I'm not 
casting dispersions. I'm just saying it's a question. I think it's a legitimate question that investors in the fund should be saying, wait, it, even in this counter trend bounce from the 29 area to the 45, which is a fantastic gain, just on an oversold basis, it's given back half of it already. So I'm watching closely because I would love to be able to say to subscribers, hey, as a, a kind of a an, a speculation in the inner arc innovation area, the whole innovation area, um, let's just get one of these, let's get a position in this, this is an ETF and and just hold it and see what happens. But it's so dangerous, it's still in the wrong area. And that even today, I was looking to see, it's up 31 cents at 35.53. With the way some of the uh, tech sector is moving, it should be doing much better. So I'm just saying, I'm pointing it out. I was asked about it. It's got the arch formation, just like the SMHs, except the SMHs are much higher, but they've also got the arch formation. So in this case, watch out for 34. If it, if it closes under 33 in the next couple of days, uh, this is not good at all. It needs very quickly by the, the second week of May, needs to be trading in the 37.80 to 38.50 area. All right, let's get back to our story. So I didn't finish because crude oil, uh, has pulled back very sharply. Uh, it filled the gap, and now it's lower. At, uh, remember, I said there was a 200 period moving average at uh, $80, and that peak C had every ingredient that I would consider a D. Uh, I said I anticipate that it would pull back. Well, it's pulled back away from the 200 period moving average. I was asked about SCO yesterday. I don't know if I finished my my statement because I think I got distracted. But SCO is the inversion. This is the pro shares ultra short. Uh, crude oil trading at 25.35, down 43 cents. I just find that these are kind of tricky to get if you get them near the lows, like we got the S&P short the day after the high. That gives us a bit of a cushion. Getting in at any other point gives you that risk. I'd love to get the turning point because once you're there, it gives you that little bit of leeway because if it moves in your direction correctly, um, then when it has a consolidation, it shouldn't even get close to your, your entry point if your entry point was almost at the exact turning point. So in this particular instance, yes, it is in leg B, but in the, in the uh, inverse shares, it doesn't necessarily mean to say it should go to a C and a D. All I can say is that if you're in it, I'd stay in it, but I would have a stop in some part of my position. I'd have a stop of about a point uh, lower than where it is, I, I just because I think that's part of money management with these things. But if it closes next week, any day, no, it doesn't have to close. If it spikes above 26.28, it's at 25.38 right now. If it, if it goes to 26.28, did I say 26? Yeah, 26.28. Um, it's getting closer to the 200 period moving average of 27.79, but it's got a long way to go. So just use that as kind of a guide. Your best guess is to say leg C has begun. Where's it going? And then go back to your crude oil. Uh, and crude oil is now in a leg. Uh, I think it's a leg C to the B to the downside. Not the point. The point is that this right here, this low of the at 72.61 of the of the 30th of March. If that's taken out, that's going to be a big give back. But actually, if you remember, I said that this this propeller shaft pattern in the Chapman Wave methodology, and I'll be talking about this in my webinar, I'll be talking about some of these techniques so that you can practice them. I've got lots of webinars based on these particular techniques. But this propeller shaft says if you don't, if you go from the top side and then rally and then create this rectangle, long rectangle formation, and then take out the low side and then get back into the rectangle. Unless you started to trade decisively above the resistance, and that would be in the 84s, so you've got to be trading there. There's a weekly chart, and you've got to be trading there. You can come right back and just stay stuck in this rectangle formation. That makes the whole area of 72 to 70 now a very important support for crude oil. And then when I wanted to go to the TLT, I just wanted to mention briefly, we're uh, on, the, on the daily chart. We're getting close to testing the low of the 19th, which is at 103.48. So if, if there is a move under the 103s, then you're looking at the bigger rectangle of the uh, weekly chart. And what did I, I type here? This is on the 13th of April. I said Mike called, and it was at 10, oh, if I can read it from this distance, 105. Uh, one, one. Yeah, let me make this bigger. Uh, format 14. 
Uh, Mike, at 10 and 10:50 a.m. exactly, well, almost exactly the same time as this on the uh, 13th of April. The 13th of April was um, Thursday. Oh, it's a week, two weeks, two weeks ago. I said I think that the TLT is stuck. It was at 106s. I said I think it's just stuck in a range and it'll be stuck in a range for quite some time. And now we uh, two weeks later, and we're at 104.69, stuck in the range. And I said, here's the midpoint. If it starts to close decisively under the midpoint, that would be at about 103.50. Then it could start to work its way to the bottom. Then we make the yields push higher. I think it's just stuck. I don't think it's yields right now that we're looking at. There are other things going on. And I'll, I, when I say other things going on, let me just say the VIX index, even with today's uh, rally, um, no, with today's rally is down $1.41 at 17.45. It's just stuck in the teens. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up at 214, S&P's up 35. We'll look at the uh, E-mini futures as soon as I read that. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So uh, let me just talk about this for a moment. Uh, there's a ton that I'd written down that I want you to look at. I'll get to that. But from yesterday, uh, that was at 21.50 on the 26th. So that's 9.50, about just the 10. Uh, was at 10, 10 p.m. Um, in the 10 minute chart, the E mini cross positive. And even with this crazy move between 41, uh, uh, 41.05 and for about 4, 40.90, uh, 
at 8.30 p.m. when the economic news, whatever it was, came out, whoosh, 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 up and down, the nine did not cross negative. And even now, as we're looking, it's, it's green. So that just says that you could have held a long position all the way through if you had the courage to hold it through that 8.30 uh, zigging and zagging. But I'm just saying purely on a technical level, this is a technique. So I'm going to be discussing a couple of techniques in, in, in great detail as we go through it. And I'm going to be discussing it um, when you – uh, when you are looking at the different charts that I'm considering that I've said to subscribers over the um, over the coming three to five weeks, we're going to be looking at a number of stocks that are starting to form some kind of a base that should have a pretty decent move going into the summer and going into the the fall. And that's the way I want to look at it. So within the context of the markets, this is this was a peak F in the 10 minute in the Chapman Wave methodology for those of you who use it. Then what happened because of that spike, the fact that it took out the starting point right there of 40.92.75 at uh, 4.10, that was made uh, at 4.10 this morning, early this morning, I wasn't up at that time, but that's what the chart says. Um, it says to me, and the 200 period moving average was resistance, 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 then it became support. It says to me that this has to be a new start. This is a new leg A and a B. I could give it an alternate count. If that's the case, there should be higher highs going to maybe the 418, 422 level. I remember saying 4118. Uh, the other day was a number to watch carefully. So 4118 to 4122 is a possibility as long as this uh, nine period moving average remains good. And in this cup formation that's formed at this peak D in the one minute chart, I could do the five and others. I just thought it's better to stick with one thing. I normally look at the, the, uh, the cup and I say, OK, that means that there should be, if there's going to be an arch formation, I choose a particular candle. <clears throat> And I say from that candle, either the plumb line low or some other candle, there should be a move back to that level. And I draw it in like this right here. And I would say that by using this technique, by uh, 10, 1038 today, the high of uh, 4115 41, 41, 15 should be hit. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, that's the kind of thing I do. Now, I had a question. I had a question yesterday. We had a caller, Larry from Wyoming, was looking at UNG, and I said, you know what? I'll look at UNG, but there are certain patterns that we want to see. So in other words, the VIX, I just I forgot about the VIX. I went back to my daily, weekly, monthly chart, uh, and uh, it shows the VIX, and the VIX is down. And that just says there's buying pressure. But it is a sustained move in the 20s on any particular day with a down, 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 triple digit, the S&P down probably 55 or more that says, hey, you're going to stay that way through the close if that VIX index holds in the 20 to 21 area level. And that's what I'd be looking for in the next couple of days if there's going to be another downturn. And I'll talk about that when we get back. But I wanted to say a UNG. So the candle that I'm looking at now, red, uh, uh, down to uh, cents at uh, 6.74. And what S&P says, natural gas story, 79 billion versus 75 billion. Estimate was 75 billion. Um, I, actually, I've never quite understood how the market really responds to these numbers. Because sometimes you'd think, oh, it should be down. And it goes up. And you think it should be up and down. So all I can say is, how the market responds is most important. So now I also want you to say, so Larry, uh, if you're listening, so the UNG is pulled back. I know that you have done a lot of work to say that you're in the area that says this is where it should move up. And I'd say there's something wrong with the con with, with natural gas, uh, both con the contracts as well as the reality of, of what's happening and, and deliveries and all sorts of things that apply, uh, could be shipping, could be a whole bunch of things. I don't know. All I know is that the rallies that have been this, – this was a big rally, percentage-wise, 714 to the uh, 10 area. I mean, that's almost 30 percent. That's a, that's a great move. But what's really important is that the givebacks 
have been so vicious, and even this rally just cannot get legs. So I, I would look at this and I'd say, I would only be comfortable using it as a trade if I start to see a trade. The pink nine period moving average in the weekly is at 7.52. Uh, Not good enough. I'd have to get into the eights. I'd even say 8.55 is the 40. If we haven't had a move that even, let alone closed above it, but just touched the 14 period moving average since back in uh, November of last year when it was in the 24s. And here it is in the sixes. So I'm just going to say to you, this is a, I don't know if it would be to my advantage to be looking at this as, as even though it's low price, the United States Natural Gas Fund, as a way of garnering uh, income or any kind of income, because I think you, anyone who's been trading this, I, I want to, I'd like you to raise your hands out there. How many have you have, not once, but made a sustained um, series of profits in your UNG trade? If you have, that's that's what you got to do. If you if you've been if you've been wise enough to do it in such a way that you've garnered profits from a declining um, a market, that's fabulous. Then you're doing that. Your technique's right. But if you keep losing money, you're gonna. It's not worth it. There are other things that you could trade. So I'm just saying, if you've done your homework and you know what you're doing, uh, see. So Mike says, Basil, look at the natural gas contract NG. It's up. I'm a little slow on this, I guess. Now it's down only 0 0.01 at 2.293. But this is. The arch formation that successfully holds way above the left side high, is a, a technique that I will probably talk about in my webinar coming up. These are the different techniques, different applying to different stocks. Needs to see the stochastic rounding up into close to the 80% level. At that point, I'll say to you, yes, now I'm saying to you, as a trade, only as a trade, I would, I would treat it, if this is what you focused on, I would treat it as something that you can buy. But as it stands right now, I, I just don't see it. I need to see higher highs and higher lows, not lower highs and lower lows. So that's the way I would look at. I'd even say I'd rather wait for the trend to be for it to become a trend rather than to wait for it to change one direction to the other. That's all I'm saying. So I want you to cover it. I said I'd cover it again today. I want you to see what happened uh, at, during this hour. And, and maybe I'll come again at one o'clock. I'll do it again and look at it. But, but it needs to move, and if it needs to move, you can't be pink in the nine-period moving average. It's got to go green and holding there. And the stochastic cannot be at 61. It has to be at 80% or higher. I'll be back. Let's just have a look as we go to the break. Did we get to that left side, right side price? Yep, there it is. There's a 4114.75. That's the cup formation. I'll be showing that. Look, that was live. I'll show it again as one o'clock. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So we have someone in the den, uh, ATV says, uh, um, haven't traded UNG, but have traded natural gas, uh, traded EQT, which is the EQT core, natural gas and hydrocarbon chart uh, for four or five trades, usually a day or two, three days, and all to the good so far. Hey, that's great. I found that the EQT is just so much easier to see. Maybe that's because it trades in the, 30, in the 30s and the other ones down in the sixes, and I can just see the lines better. This has made a peak ABC. And then it made an arch formation. You know, I talk about that all the time. This is the dreaded H. It took it out, but within three days, two days actually, it closed back above the left side low. And now it's gone to another peak, ABCD, below the previous high, which always says, just be a little careful here because you want to be see must take out the previous high. And yet it had a good pop-up just a little while ago today from the opening from the doji close yesterday. It's just a little bit easier to see. But let me just tell you something. You see the way the 200, I like to put the 200 period moving in. You don't have to use it, but look how important it was. It was support back in uh, October, November of 2021, 2020, and it rallied to a peak C minus, made the arch formation, did a one to one to the downside from the 200 period moving average. And that was it. Goodbye, the 200 period moving average from back in December of last year, when it was out in the 37 area, 36, 37. And now it's trying, it's getting closer and closer. So I'm saying, I'm looking at this particular chart, and it seems to me I can read it a little bit better because if it can get to 35, 30, then that 34, 93, 200 period moving average just becomes a magnet. It'll just grab it. But as long as it keeps pulling away, you've got to be a little bit careful. And um, the MACD is holding okay. It's not good. And stochastics per 29% on balance volumes week. So it's got a lot of things against it. It needs price. Price has to now dictate the tacticals in the EQT. So I, did, I didn't want to just follow through with that. Um, another question I had, oh, so BB, I don't know if i got time now. I'll just put it in and see where it's going. BB, BBAI, maybe I'll do it again. Yeah, it's, 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 it's after that peak D, cup formation right to the target on the left side of from the, on the 17th of April. It's pulled back. Now the 200 period moving average is, is, is like a magnet. So what I wanted to say is, um, I did matter. Look, Merck, I had someone the other day saying, I, I, um, getting, uh, starting to get out of Merck, and I said, this was about two weeks ago. I said, no, no, it's looking good. Well, Merck ran up to 100, about 116. Now it's had uh, two days of red candles. Now I'd say to you, if you want to be lightening up, Yes, lighten up a little bit. Don't lighten up too much. This is the fantastic stuff making all time stocks that make new all time highs. Tend to keep doing that until there's a major trend change. Uh, okay, you already saw some good. Um, so yeah, that's it. But don't don't think that this is a short or anything like that. Not yet. Everything about it says stocks that make new highs tend to want to come back to that periodically. Uh, in fact, time and time again. Lily, Eli, Lily, question. Now, that was skyrocketed to a peak F all-time high today at 398.53. It gapped up to it. And the MACD, everything about it is um, 
confer has confirmed the move yesterday to the E. This this move to F is saying, whoops, be a little careful, fantastic to all time highs, but just short term, it's getting a little bit overboard. I would not be surprised if in two weeks' time we're seeing it at 386, that it's testing the 370 to 360 area, just in a digestive phase, because everything everything else, the stochastic's now back down under 80%. But and the MACD is almost ready to cross negative, but the nine is still way over the fourteen. Another question came in. Let me get oh wheat. Look, does wheat? Yes, W. Look at this. Wheat has uh, plummeted down to a leg E at six thirty one and a half. But W E A T, which is the um, wheat tikrium uh, wheat fund, uh, made a doji candle after gapping down at six thirty five. Uh, this is going to be key because the on-balance volume is oversold. I use on-balance volume for oversold and overbought. That I don't use the others because they might get into that area, but they can stay there for a long time. Look, the stochastics at 8.23%. I'd be real careful. The way the the, uh, the soft commodities like wheat, corn, etc., uh, I'm just I'd say be careful. If you want to be buying it, I'd rather wait for higher highs and higher lows. I don't like this, even though it's a doji candle. Next question came in. Oh. ENPH. Now look at this. It's so tough when you get earnings coming out. This is the exact opposite of um, <clears throat> of Meta or yesterday was Microsoft. Look, we were looking at uh, N phase the other day. It went to a peak C, and it was above the nine period moving average, above, above the fourteen period moving average. The MACD was good. Stochastic was over eighty percent, and uh, no position. But I was looking at it. And I had a question. There was a question about what what would you do, and I said no. I, I I would wait for a little bit of a pullback, and that pullback was around the about to the 223 to 221 area. But I would have a very tight two point stop or so. Then Friday it had a very sharp dip, which would have taken you out of any position that you had. It hit the 14 period, closed sharply above the the uh, nine period moving average, and then comes. Is that Friday? What is that? It was the 25th was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday was, no, today's the 27th. 25th was Tuesday. And look at this. Tuesday, it goes a little, it can't get to the 200 period moving average and it stalls. Well, did I know that? Uh, I should have known that. I wish I had known that, that there was an earnings report coming up because with anything in the energy area, um, <laughs> You never know with the earnings reports. Well, look what happened. Look at this. You see that gap? You see that gap? You see the, you see the price? The high of the day. One day is trading at uh, with a low of 220.27. And the next day, the high is 183.37. Uh, okay, so go it goes all the way down to 160. And now it's at 164.82. Um it's inside. It hasn't taken out the low. That's a good sign. It says that if there's any rally at all in natural gas or whatever it is in the energy, I think it's more energy area. Um, the, if it can get to the one without taking out the low of 160.61, if it's able to get to 175 to 177 by Tuesday of next week without stalling, there could be such an oversold condition now that it actually tries over the next week instead of making a low low just to at least attempt to get above the 183.31 high of yesterday. But this is – how do you know? You just know that you've got to be real careful. You've got to have a stop in place. And that's what happens with earnings reports. And look at the earnings report of uh, Microsoft, the exact opposite. It, it spirals from a lousy chart – Going into Thursday, uh, going to what is today, Thursday, going to Tuesday's low of 275.37. Whoosh, earnings report comes. And the, and it just flipped negative in the, uh, the nine under the 14. MACD was lousy, stochastic was terrible. Bam, it has a fantastic uh, candle yesterday. And today is not only gone above that, it is much higher. It's up seven at 302.54. And Left side, right side, price time match in the cup formation. Uh, it broke out above it. He has this trend line, this Chapman inside wedge target resistance line. It's even gone above that today on a weekly basis. So I'm just saying that earnings reports 
can really, out of the blue, just everything comes right or everything comes wrong. You just never know. And that's why it's always tough to sit through an earnings report. I'll be back um, uh, for the final segment. And I will be doing the one o'clock show today. Uh, that's Larry's hour. And tomorrow I'm away. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Just do this quickly. So we did get that cup formation just as I drew in with the left side, right side, price side, by match, and then a couple of little tiny bars and a squeak to it, eeky, and then pull back. What I normally would do is, I, I, I you might just have straight lines, but I have a rectangle, so I just grab that. You can do it with two straight lines. I grab that, and I say, that's the parameter for now. Close under 41.07 says, uh-oh, it's going to be going down quite a bit lower. Now, look at the, this is a one-minute chart of the E-mini. Look at this. So this is going peak A, peak B, peak C. The technicals are still very strong, but I like to be ahead of the game. So when in the futures, when I get two parallel highs, and the unbalanced volume or the stochastic or the relative strength give a little hiccup, I say, I'm going to use that as a Chapman Wave phantom peak. I, I, and then I put that in red to say, hey, this is this is a, a subsidiary of your technique. It's not your core technique, but it's the alternate count. <coughs> Excuse me. Because you want to be ahead of the game. So that now I go to a D. And I'm already, I if I, if I have any positions, take some off. I say, okay. I'm ready. This, if it turns into a C, it'll still come back to a D. But I like to be ahead of the game, and I'm saying, all right, this is the 10-minute chart. 
Now we've had 10.20 in the morning was up until 10.20 has been the first part of the, the day. Now we've got the next part of, the, next part of the, the, the trading session. We'll see what happens. I think this is still a mixed market. And the reason why we are short the SPY from, let me just show you, for subscribers to my opening call, from the day after the high of 415.72, managed to get a real good price. And we, in the three times short, we did just take a tiny tad off this morning as part of money management because this looks to me as if there's going to be lower highs and lower lower lows until the night yeah, we just look at that particular strength that we just saw and cross this negative and then I think so be careful out there be very selective that's what we hope to subscribe don't forget my webinar coming up on Wednesday this coming Wednesday check the front page of TFN Stay tuned, you've got a program coming up, I believe, to be Steve Rhodes. Yep, 